YouTube, welcome back to the channel. You are watching Gunplay TV, and I've got to apologize. It's been quite a bit since my last video. I've taken on a new job. It's been pretty time consuming, and as you may or may not know, right, this YouTube thing is kind of a secondary pastime. I'd love to take it full time, so hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the like button, leave a comment, help to push us through the algorithm so I can do just that. But we're back. It's a new year, and we've got some new content. In addition to that, I find myself kind of exploring a new video segment, which is going to be night vision. And this is going to be the first entry in that segment. So without any further ado, let's get straight into the NVG 10. All right. So as I said, what we've got here on the table is the NVG 10. Now you may or may not be familiar with the world of night vision. It is quite expansive, quite expensive, and quite snobby at the end of the day, right? A lot of the guys that are in the industry and that do this kind of thing all day, every day, and live and breathe night vision will look down upon something like this NVG-10. Now, there's two types or two categories of night vision that we'll explore here in the channel. Digital, which is what we got here on the table, essentially the same technology that you might find in your ring camera that allows you to see technically in the dark, right? And then alternatively, you've got analog night vision, which is uh, kind of the old school splinter cell, single or dual tube, white phosphor, green phosphor setup that you see a lot of the high speed guys running. <clears throat> now, that type of thing is going to cost you quite a bit more than something like an NVG-10, which is a digital solution. So as we can see here on the box, they say that it's perfect for surveillance, outdoor activities, hunting, boating, and it certainly does find itself uh, usable in those applications. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and bust the box open and we'll talk a bit about this unit. Now. So first things first inside the box, I do have some stickers from the guys at Good Night Gear and I wanna give them a special shout out because they were kind enough to send this NVG-10 unit out for review. So if you find that you're interested in this NVG-10, you might wanna try one for yourself. Use code GUNPLAY10 and get yourself one and that does help the channel as well. So I appreciate you and appreciate the guys there at Good Night Gear. Now busting this thing open, this is essentially the contents of the package. Now I have opened this up and so this won't be your exact presentation as you get your unit, but you are gonna get your usual user's manual. I'll be quite frank with you, I haven't explored this even once just yet. Additionally, you will get a nice microfiber kind of velour bag to carry your unit in, which is, I have to admit, probably a nice addition. And then as we get further in, you got the unit itself. Now, this white box off to the side will contain things like the mount. We'll take a look at that here in a bit. Um, and uh, some of the other accessories like the battery charger and uh, the like. But we'll leave most of what's in there in there because that's not why we're here, right? We are here to explore this NVG-10 unit. Now, as you get it uh, in the box, you will find that this uh, accessory arm is not attached out of the box. So you will have to attach that. It does include uh, seven screws for that purpose. And I went so far as to Loctite mine. I Loctite everything, especially something like this that's gonna be hanging off your face. So once you've got that on there, right, you can explore mounting this onto a helmet, which we'll take a look at. But a quick tour around the unit, right? So of course you've got your objective lens here on this side, of course, that's going to be facing, frankly, your objective. You've got your ocular lens, right? This is gonna include an eye cup, a rubber, a molded eye piece uh, to fit close to your eye and hope to prevent some of that splashback that you will get being as this is a digital unit. We'll find when we turn this on, there's essentially a screen on the inside. So that is a nice addition uh, just for that security element, if you will. And in addition on the front, right, you may have noticed this second round aperture of sorts, right? This is actually your infrared illuminator. So. A bit about digital night vision, right? It essentially is a night vision capable camera, a camera that can see infrared. But the weak side or the weak points with digital night vision as compared to analog night vision is you typically will need some type of supplementary lighting source to help to illuminate the environment for you to be able to see. This is why your ring cameras will have those very dimly glowing infrared lights and LEDs that help to illuminate the scene around where your camera is set up. The same exact premise holds true when we're talking about a unit like this and a digital night vision unit. So you've got an illuminator there. We'll take a look at that in a bit. Of course, here on the side, you've got your battery port. I will say it is 
pretty well threaded, um, decently made on first inspection, and this is gonna take an 18650 battery. So a bigger battery than you'll find on some of the night vision, or the, I should say the analog night vision units, which will typically run on a AA or CR123. But the upside is, well, this is a very prolific battery type. Those of you who vape uh, probably have a bunch of these laying around and they are readily available and can be recharged, which is nice considering the fact that most people that run analog night vision will kind of steer you away from using rechargeable batteries in those units with digital it's not so much a concern. So it's nice to have that. This uh, battery cap is, um, like I said, well threaded and there is an O-ring here on the inside to help seal that with or from water and detritus from the outside. Um, but I think from the outside looking in, I think we've pretty much covered uh, all of what there is to see kind of here on the outside uh, with the exception, of course, of this focusing ring, which we'll take a look at when we look at some live footage. Now, I'll switch the unit on and we'll see exactly how much of this can be seen through the camera. Now switching that on, you're just simply going to press and hold this lower button. Again, you've got three buttons here. You've got a left, a right, and a power button. Um, it's worth noting, there are slight um, buttresses, if you will, around the buttons to help shield them from accidental presses. That's certainly a nice addition and a thoughtful addition at that. Um, the buttons are tactile and seem to work well enough. I mean, as we look in there, right, you will see that screen illuminating. So another cool thing about the unit is you can switch between white and green uh, viewing modes, right? So as we know, right, most of us who have seen night vision in pop culture, Splinter Cell, video games, etc., will know that green phosphor or that green night vision image is kind of what most people think of when they think night vision. That's not necessarily always the case. Um, nowadays, you do have the ability to utilize uh, or purchase night vision that is a white phosphor unit, which produces a um, kind of a bluer white and black style image versus the traditional greenish and black style image, right? So if you are a fan of the green and the traditional look, you can press this button here on the right one time and you'll see that output changes from white to green and back and forth, right? Now, additionally, there are some menu modes. Being as this is a digital unit, you can do things like set the time. You can link this via Wi-Fi to your device. We'll take a look at that here in a bit. And that's going to allow you to record the footage that you get through a unit like this. So while it is not uh, as effective in low light conditions as a PVS-14, for example, or a traditional analog unit, you are afforded some of the digital first world comforts that come with a modern digital device, right? And again, a lot of that is gonna be included within the menu, which is accessed by pressing and holding a long press on that left button there. Now, as I look through this menu, and I will try to get a closer up here in a bit, you do have Wi-Fi settings, date and time, you got an auto power off feature, language, LCD brightness controls, and then you can quickly reset to the default settings, right? So that pretty much covers the functionality of the NVG-10, right? Essentially a night vision camera that's been formatted and designed to be worn on a helmet, right? And so that's why you've got this kind of accessory arm here to the left. So one thing I did leave out in the unboxing and we'll take a look at now is going to be the mounting system that's included with your NVG-10. Now, this again is gonna come in the box. Essentially what you've got is your plate, which is gonna to attach to your traditional Wilcox or Wilcox style shrouds. Uh, we'll take a look at that here on an actual helmet in just a sec. But it is slightly different from what you may have seen if you are familiar with night vision and the mounting solutions from the likes of Wilcox, the G24 and so on. It is a bit um, more of a bulky design, right? You've got several hinge points, all of which can be tightened and loosened using these wing nuts. Um, it's not a bad design and it's, it's frankly, it's effective, it does work, but when comparing to something like a traditional G24, you will notice there is a difference. Now, this mount here on the right, this G24 costs $500. This entire unit from Goodnight Gear is $299, and that's before using Gunplay 10 and saving 10%. So quite the distinction, the stark distinction at that and the price, um, but you can frankly feel, you can even hear frankly, the build quality in something like this Wilcox G24, but it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg. 
You don't get that same heavy duty quality, but this is a, um, a well-constructed aluminum mounting solution. Now, um, I've gone so far as to add a key ring to this. Um, we'll talk about that as I pull out the helmet, but if you decide you'd like to mount this um, to your helmet, what you would do is loosen up this kind of C-clamp here at the end of the mount, and that is going to interface here with that accessory arm, again, that's included in the box. Now you're gonna tighten that down with, again, that wing nut, and it does clamp on there pretty good, but you'll notice that it does allow for a little bit of articulation. That's both potentially a good or a bad thing. We'll take a look at why that is here in a second. Um, in addition to that kind of up and down articulation, you do have the ability to kind of slide it left and right. And I find that that's useful in adjusting for your interpupillary distance, right? Not everybody's eyes are the same distance apart. This will ensure that you can get this monocular perfectly centered in front of your eye. So not a bad design. Certainly, uh, it leaves a lot to be desired when you compare it to something like the Wilcox, but for the price point, and considering that this is more of a hobby grade, entry level, digital night vision solution for folks like airsofters and people that just want to get out there and have some fun, it's really not that bad. The construction on this, again, is all aluminum. It may actually not look like it. It looks more like plastic in the pictures. And as I was looking online and, and looking at the listings, I honestly expected this to feel a lot cheaper, but it is relatively substantial in hand. Um, and so I'm not mad about that, right? All in all, the construction for $300, you really can't complain. Now, the arm, not the best. Um, you do have a kind of spring-loaded clamping solution, right? And so as we put this on the helmet, it is kind of a quick attach. And if you want to remove, you'll press this in, which retracts that tooth there at the bottom and allows you to pull it off the helmet. So let's take a look at that now. All right, guys, so this is something of a special cameo on the channel. I've been working on this helmet for quite a bit. Again, gonna be exploring more of night vision this year, so stay tuned if you wanna see more of that and more about this helmet build. But when you wanna go to attach it to a shroud, like this Wilcox shroud included on, uh, this is a Team Wendy 3.0 um, LTP bump helmet, the X-Fill bump, um, but it does have the kind of standardized shroud. Um, it is very easy to attach. You'll attach this tooth here at the top first and then simply press down. You can hear that snap in, right? It's in there, uh, not the sturdiest, you know, and again, it's not a Wilcox to Wilcox solution, but it's not bad. Um, and you can go so far as to attach one of your bungee lanyards to, again, the key ring that I added just to add a little bit of extra retention, right? And now once it's on the helmet, you can of course loosen your wing nuts and make sure that this is gonna sit right about where you want it, push it left to right to ensure that you know, you've know you got your, your eye relief and interpupillary distance set properly. And at that point, you're ready to rock. You flip this unit on and you're in the game. Now, another upside as I shoot this in the studio, right? I've got this MVG-10 pointed at a studio light. Now, it's not the brightest light, it's a relatively soft studio light, but that's something that you would not consider doing, or you would at least think twice about doing with a traditional analog night vision unit. When you've got this digital setup, it's essentially a camera. You can wear this thing outside in broad daylight and not have to worry about damaging your optics, your micro channel plate, your tubes, etc. right? it is a much more foolproof solution and something that you don't have to baby nearly as much, but it will leave a bit to be desired when we talk about performance. So again, this is kind of a first look at the unit. I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed for the cost, right? All things considered, something like this gets you in the game and at least allows you to see in the dark, right? Now, on my helmet, I do have some supplementary infrared lighting as well. I've got a Surefire Vampire on here, as well as one of the Princeton Tech TAC lights, which has um, an IR uh, task light on there. So there, there, there's a lot that you can do to kind of boost the performance out of a unit like this, primarily by adding additional supplementary infrared lighting to help illuminate the scene even more this unit is going to benefit from all the light that you can give it, right? It does, again, have the included illuminator on uh, on its face there, but it's not nearly as bright as something like this Surefire. And even this Princeton Tech, I find, adds quite a bit 
of throw and, and usable light for a unit like this. Now, you can see I flipped this up just a bit with that mounting solution. So this I find is probably the best way to kind of roll this thing up out of your view. Um, you can simply fold it right back down and have that same uh, more or less eye positioning that you had before you folded it up. Um, it's not out of the way as much as you might like, right? And you certainly can fold it up further. Um, but what happens in my experience, and albeit a limited experience, this is again, first look and impressions on the unit. Once you fold this back down, if you if you bend it at one of these upper hinges, it's a little bit more temperamental to get it in the exact same spot or same spot, rather. Uh, but it can be done. It's just not as quick as simply flipping this up and out of the way and then flipping it back down. But all things considered, again, three hundred dollars, frankly less than that if you use the code Gunplay Ten. Again, shout out to the guys at Good Night Gear. It's really, really hard to overlook something like this if you're just starting out and you just kind of want to get your toes wet without throwing a couple grand at a PVS-14. This will get you in the game. So with all that being said, if you found this video informational, educational, or entertaining whatsoever, if you haven't already, I'd ask that you leave a comment, hit that subscribe button if you feel so inclined, and please like the video as it does help to push this type of content through the algorithm and make sure that you see more of this on your feed. And with all that out the way, I'm gone.